Hi, I'm Lisa Carlton with College Match Point. And I'm Bob Carlton with College Match Point. And today we'll be reviewing the admissions trends for the class of 2019 with an eye towards the implications for the class of 2020 as they submit their applications. And I think if we were to say one word that kind of represented this admission cycle, unpredictability would probably have to be that word. And by unpredictable, I mean that we heard many students who were like, wait, I didn't get in, but my friend had less stats and, I, and they got in, or wait, my safety school just became my match. And we heard those kids who had the pleasant surprises of, wow, I got into that school. So we really saw it as unpredictable. And I think what this tells us with an eye towards next year is something that many of us kind of already knew, but it's great to remember. College admissions is unpredictable. And the best way to deal with that when you plan is to have a varied college list and to have the majority of your focus on those match colleges so that you have plenty of great options when those decisions come out. Many of our students have match colleges on their list that are flagship universities. Those schools have seen the largest enrollment bump over the last 10 years. Schools like University of Georgia, University of Virginia have seen their applications skyrocket. And outside of the Southeast, schools like Michigan and in the UC system have also seen strong increases in their admissions applications. We've also noted that the largest increases have come in STEM. Science, engineering, and computer science have seen significant competitiveness at the flagship universities. Also, we've seen something that we've always known, but it became even bigger this year, which is early is better. And you're always going to hear that in college admissions. But especially for those of you in Texas, we're really seeing with UT and A&M that getting your applications in early, many times as soon as school starts, is really going to help in terms of giving you the best chance for both your major and for a positive admissions decision. So we encourage you to plan out the work that you have to do on your college applications so that you're ready to apply early. The other thing that we saw in early, which was really interesting, is for many of our students, they've always applied to the highly selective schools, often in the ED round one, early decision, the binding decision. But what we saw this year was kind of two things. We saw schools, colleges, filling more and more of their class with the ED round. And then the second thing we saw is more and more colleges adding an ED two round which then required students to kind of rethink their strategy in terms of mapping out how to manage if they maybe have an ED1 choice and an ED2 choice. So the word early has definitely become even bigger this year, and I anticipate that same trend is going to probably increase over the next cycle. Now, Lisa mentioned managing sort of your list portfolio. One of the most important ways to manage that list portfolio is indicating to colleges and universities you're interested in their school. Now, it may surprise you, but these colleges and universities have invested in sophisticated online systems to track your interests, not only your visits to their website, but most importantly, a student taking an official college tour and a student meeting with the college rep when they visit that high school. Now, we encourage students to visit colleges most importantly because it's the best way to understand is that school a good fit for their college list. But we also encourage students to be aware how to demonstrate interest to a school. Again, take an official college tour, and when you talk to your admissions rep, make sure you understand the kind of questions that you want to get answers to. And of course, we couldn't really talk about trends without addressing the Varsity Blues scandal, a terribly unfortunate event that happened in our industry. And I want to talk just for a second about how we think that's going to impact the coming cycle. And I'd say most of it, we tend to think, is a real positive. The first most important thing, which might be obvious, but I think for adults involved with students in college admissions, and parents, it's really important to step back and remember that it is critical that an application and an essay, that all of those materials 
are done by a 17 year old and are not over edited. They need to be in the authentic voice and in the authentic mind of a 17 year old. And this is, I think, going to be more important than ever. And honestly, I have to say that I think this is a win. Mm -hmm. This is a win for students to let them have more ownership. And for those of us adults who are working with students to remember our role is on this side to guide them, to encourage them, to offer them mentoring and assistance, but the student actually owns the application. Mm -hmm. So as we think about the coming season, we hope that these trends that we've talked a little bit about will help inform you as you begin your work in the college admission cycle for the class of 2020. Thank you.